Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much. It's a beautiful day at the farm. The sun is trying to come out. It has been a rainy day in the morning, but you know, when the rain comes, those are blessings to farmers and of course to everyone out there. But I'm really super excited to be here and of course to bring for you updates about the pig section. You can see this is a different background. I know you guys have really asked for this video, but we are here. We don't only do the goats, but we also have the pigs at the farm. And I also have my co-director on standby, who is going to say hello to you guys and also say something to you guys. Hello. Everybody, my name is Co-Director Grafton here at Value Farm, the VF family. And I want to thank all of you guys who actually took the time to subscribe because the channel is definitely growing. Growing? And we could not get to this point without your help. We're definitely trying to get to that 150 mark. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, 150 look way better than 120. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're a fan, if you appreciate the content, we strongly urge for you guys to just do us that favor, hit that subscribe button and let's keep it going, okay? So yes. we're definitely in the pig section, one of my favorite sections here. As you can tell, I don't know about my physique, but you can tell I <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, because I love the pork. You love the pork, <laughs> and the goat, and of the love. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of eating, it's holiday season. Yeah. So for those of you who have not yet joined the pig aspect of farming, you're probably regretting that fact right now, uh -huh. because around Christmas, this is the time of year <laughs> where if you plan everything out accordingly, mm -hmm. you should already have orders of the wazoo. Mm -hmm. You should be able to Ripping. sell out every single ready pig at your farm. Those butchers, instead of you calling, exactly. like you usually have to do throughout the year, mm -hmm. they're the ones calling you right now. Exactly. You could be stubborn at this point, mm -hmm. even if you're not that type of person. But this is the time where you could choose to be stubborn. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to give you the price that you want, you don't have to sell. But even before you get to that point, guys, when you make the decision to go into piggery, Big pun. there's a few things that we always tell you guys that you have to adhere to. And if you want to get into pig farming for the long haul, because you know, there are a lot of people who try and they just give up halfway through. And the reason that happened, there are a number of reasons that happens actually. Mm. Those who fail to plan are planning to fail. Yep. Right? I'm sure you've heard that one before, but it's aptly true when it comes to this particular part of farming right if you don't have a way to lower your cost for your feeding you're gonna suffer that if is you true. don't understand how to enter this business you're gonna suffer even if you have the money you don't have to buy 25 to 30 sows at the same time that is true <laughs> you can start very small you know like dr s has said in a few videos i would say maybe like a few months back right yeah if you have 3,000 production, theoretically speaking, you're a commercial pig farmer. Yes. Because those 3,000 will quickly multiply into 30 and beyond, okay? Don't look at the piglets when you go make your purchase just because they're small and they're cute. You're like, ah, instead of taking three, give me 10, give me 20. Mm. Because very quickly, they're gonna go from eating a half a kg of feeds per day to having to eat three kgs of feed per day. That is true. So we're sitting here, the beauty of us being in front of this structure, you don't really hear much crying. You're hearing a few <laughs> relaxation grunts and the, some of the grunts you're hearing is because these are the sows that are feeding their piglets, right? Yeah. And sometimes when the piglets nudge, they make that noise. But apart from that, they're all in there relaxing, they're napping because they're they well got fed. their feed. Yes. <laughs> they got their feed in the morning and now we're the ones who's disturbing them because their place is still being clean. Yeah. But let me tell you guys this, feeding is everything. The number one reason why pig farmers go out of business, they did not plan accordingly on how they were gonna feed their pigs. Mm. Because when you go from having three pigs and you're spending less than maybe $25 per week mm -hmm. to feed those pigs, and to all of a sudden you're spending over three, $400, 
per week, yeah, you have to be able to plan for that. These are things that we really want to address to you guys and also for people who have already started pig farming or who are planning to start or people have already given up on pig farming because we've been contacted by so many people who said, you know, I gave up on that project, it wasn't working out for me, it was very expensive. You know, when you're going to start pig farming, you make mistakes. Learn from your mistakes and move on. And also correct those mistakes so that you can be a better farmer. I know most of you are now watching this video so that you can be able to also maybe get back into business. But we are here to share our ideas, our experience so far. It has not been a smooth road. That is the truth. We are not There's hiding it. There are always challenges. challenges here and there. Yeah. And of course, as my partner said, feeding is something that is really very key in your pig farming for them to grow the conversion rates what feeds are you giving them that also matters a lot because if you're just a person who gets into pig farming but you think maybe you're going to give these pigs leftovers that is a mistake if you want to do backyard farming for yourself <laughs> then that's that we're not advising it but some people get away with that right but if you want to get into commercial pig production, guys, mm. this is a real business. It's a multi-billion dollar a year, hundreds of billions of dollars a year. True. In fact, when it comes to pork and pork belly, that's actually a commodity traded on the mercantile exchange around the globe. Okay. So when it comes to you, when you make this decision, we know it's going to be financially intensive. It's going to be labor intensive. But like anything else, if it's valuable, you have to work for it. But there are ways you can actually soften the blow. Yes. And how do you do that? Well, we always tell you guys a few reference back to some of our older videos. Even before you get into this aspect where you have your structure, you absolutely have to plant your maize. Your maize, yeah. We also urge you to plant your soy. But for those of you who don't have the option because you don't have very much land, maybe you just have a few acres of land, that's okay. What you can do, you definitely, we've done a few videos, especially yeah. one with, with the Guru Farm with Richard. We'll definitely show you the B-rolls of that as well. Yeah. You can definitely develop your own source of protein. Protein, which maggots. Is with, the, with the maggots, mm. utilizing the black soldier flies mm. to actually lay, lay the eggs. And of course, the eggs grow, they develop into larvae. And then that larvae then gets incorporated into the actual feed. It's a very high, very protein. nutritious, very high source of protein. And that will definitely help you cut the, cost. cut the cost on the actual feeding. So that's another one, right? But when you talk about some of the, these are the things you can control, mm. right? Mm. But for some of you who don't have much land at all, you need to buy your maize brand. There are ways that you can do this. You can do this, that is true. You have to purchase your maize during the off season. Mm -hmm. What do I mean <laughs> by that, right? There's always a crucial time of year when maize is not in production. Oh my this God. This is what these millers do. They make sure they squeeze you during the time of production where the maize becomes scarce, right? They sit on their stockpile and they wait for the prices to go up. And that's when they really, really, really make you feel that pain. So how do you beat them at their own game? Well, when maize is available, you buy it in abundance. Up. When it comes to the point where you're spending 200 shillings or 300 shillings for a, a kg of maize brand, that's when you stockpile on your broken. Mm -hmm. That's when you stockpile on your actual maize brand. maize brand. And then the only thing you really have to worry about are the, the other inputs, like your salt, your lime, mm. some of the other stuff that you need to add into your formula. Yeah. That's how you can beat the, the game. Because in so the beginning, true. we made that mistake. We always like, oh, maize is at 300 mm -hmm. shillings. We just buy and it. Yeah, we'll just buy it. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? When we got to the point where maize was, <laughs> was not available, cursed. the same maize brand we used to buy at 300, we had to buy at 1,000. 1,000 plus. 1,200 shillings yeah. per kg. And if you have more than 25 pigs, trust me, that number quickly adds up. That is so true. So you have to understand how to store. You don't have to have the money to buy, to build yourself a huge silo. Because mm -hmm. those who have the silos, guess what? Usually 30% of those grains, yeah. they go bad. True, with but time. But if you're utilizing the silo bags. Bags, yeah. Which we've even showed in some of our videos when we're doing mixes. So if you go to the playlist, you will see them. It's a game changer. Because for whatever the reason, I don't know how they're made. Mm. But whoever invented that, I want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Because with those bags, the mice can't eat through them. You actually have them open. And because of the aeration, 
that the, the maze itself can be kept longer yeah. and you do not lose. You don't have to count on losing about 25 to 30% of your grains. So these are the things you need to keep in mind. But when we talk about feeds, there's a very key component, yeah. which is everything, because you can have the best feed, <laughs> the best source of protein. Mm -hmm. If you have the wrong breeds, you fail. <laughs> you're gonna fail. That so, is so true. Unless you want to keep those pigs as pets. Because pigs are only supposed to be at your farm for a grand total mm. of six months. And even that's pushing the envelope. Yes. But if you're in the habit of keeping your pigs for about nine months to a year and then taking them to the butcher, you're, you're definitely doing list. something wrong. That so is so you true. definitely need to make sure you're sourcing the right, the right breeds, making sure that the right feeds is a key component of what you're doing, and making sure that your staff are feeding your pigs the right, right ratios from when you wean them to as they get to that grower stage and even the finisher stage. The ratios really matter a lot. What you give to your piglets is not what you're going to give to your finishers. You're not going to give to your growers as well. We have a detailed video on that, but you know, we've really learned on how everything progresses. Remember these piglets grow per month. Do not stick, have at least that's a, very a board. Common mistake. Yes, that is a very common mistake. Yeah. You may be having piglets that are like two months to three months, but you're giving them the same ratios as the ones for the winners. That is a huge, huge mistake. Do not give them smaller portions. Make sure per month there is a review. Go through all your pigs, see which ones have graduated to the next month. This see which ones are going to the finisher stage, the ones that have been served, and give them their right proportions. You don't need to overfeed them, but give them the proportions that you're supposed to give them. Like for the piglets, a half a kilogram in the morning and half kilogram in the afternoon. Then for the growers, you can give them two, one and a half to two kilograms, depending on their body scores as well. Because sometimes when the body score of the, of the piglet is really very small and you want it to really get, you know, to a good size, you have to at least increase on their feeding. Make sure those feeds are measured. There's a mentality of, of course, for commercial farmers, when you have so many pigs there, maybe in one star, people don't just measure these feeds. Make sure the feed is measured. As an owner of the farm, make sure that when you're going to purchase your feeds, make sure the amount that you're purchasing is going to be equivalent and you must know the calculations as well. Do not just give maybe the workers to be in control of this. That is a huge mistake. You're so, going to make losses. So guys, to make sure that we simplify this for you, and this is a paramount. Yeah. For when the pigs are, are, are newly weaned, or even before they wean, with the moms who are actually lactating, right? Mm. What you have to do, you have to make sure that the people that are actually portioning out the feed for those pigs, they give them at least a half a kg yeah. for extra to the, to the actual sow per piglet. A piglet. Okay? Now, when those piglets are weaned, right? Whether you're doing crib feed to actually get them used to eating, but you also have to keep in mind when they get from two months to mm. two and a half to three months, especially when they make that three months time frame, you can no longer feed a pig <laughs> half a kg no. at three months when they were getting that same amount at two months. So you have to make sure you gradually go from half a kg when they, before they make the two months to one. So when they get to the four months, then that's when you start to give them the mm. one and a half kgs in the morning, one and a half kgs in the, in the afternoon. afternoon. Now, if you have a pregnant sow that need the extra nutrition, mm -hmm. then it's okay for you to give her, especially those finishers too. Yep. Instead of giving them three kgs for the day, you give them two kgs in the morning, two kgs in the afternoon. Yeah. Now, when you get to the point where you're having baconers, you want to make sure that they finish <laughs> out right, you want the best ham, yeah. at that point, there should be no restriction during the last three weeks yeah. before you take those pigs to the butcher or before you process them yourself. They should always have access to food and water, and water. at all times. Clean water. Always. Clean water should be there. The water you can drink is the what animals can also drink. If you can't drink it, then it's not safe for the animals as well. Never get frustrated. Plan before you start pig farming. That's what we always advise you. That's what we keep singing here all the time. We tell you guys, plant your feeds like daily, all the time that we start a pig video. At least that is something that we have to put across all the time. But now, we need to emphasize with you. Now, mind you, we also plant our maize, but this particular season that passed, mm. we didn't plant as much as we wanted, right? Because we had a difficulty getting the tractors here. This, is this upcoming season, 
trust and believe there'll be uh -huh. at least 25 to 30 that is plus true. acres of, of maize that's going to be planted here because we definitely are increasing on our, on our production. We actually have the, the store that's actually opening. The butcher shop will be opening, opening soon. soon. So we definitely want to keep those the level of production high and consistent. So in order for us to get to the higher numbers, we definitely still want to be able to keep the cost very low very when it comes low. to feeding. So we're going to be planting a lot more maize, a lot more soy, and we're also going to be doing the black soldier flies as well. Exactly. In a, in a very big capacity. That is something that we are going to, of course, share with you guys. When we start that project, we shall come and share with you guys because we want to cut all this this cost but i really appreciate you guys so much so i'm going to take you guys so that you can see at least a preview and see how the pigs are how they are ready but i don't want to disturb them i'll just give you a sneak peek of how they are but we shall do a proper video when we are in there so that we can see the progress how everything is growing i know you guys saw the f1 pigs that we had here i know most of you want to see maybe the piglets how they are progressing already oh my god these pigs are amazing that's why we tell you guys quality quality is very key as long as you do that you're not going to regret and that's why other farmers are ahead some are still lagging behind but we really appreciate you guys so much if you haven't already checked out our social media platforms please go to instagram that is value farm ug facebook value farm tiktok value farm go check behind the scenes we shall be giving you sneak peeks and whatever is happening at value farm and please guys tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe if you haven't already and you're watching this video up to this time subscribe yes please subscribe and also share till next time bye, bye.